Welcome to the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast. This Specialty Pharmacy Podcast is a collaboration with the National Association of Specialty Pharmacy, the NASP, and the Pharmacy Podcast Network. The mission of the National Association of Specialty Pharmacy is to improve specialty pharmacy practice by promoting continuing professional education and certification of specialty pharmacists while advocating for public policies that ensure patient access to specialty medications. As the healthcare industry's leading podcast dedicated to the pharmacy profession, the Pharmacy Podcast Network is proud to bring our listeners the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast in partnership with the NASP. Pharmacy Podcast Network listeners, I am very excited about today's program because it's the relaunch of the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast and the importance of this show to the overall network because we all know as pharmacy professionals the importance of specialty pharmacy and its differentiation, its complexities and the way that uh, disease states are being managed, the collaboration between pharmacists, physicians, specialists, patients, payers, networks, um, pharmaceutical manufacturers. This is a rolling and growing aspect to healthcare and it's extremely important. I can't think of a better organization than the National Association of Specialty Pharmacies to partner with in launching the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast, and I'd like to introduce the director, executive director, Sheila Arquette, to the show, who's also with uh, Mr. Michael Agostino with Amber Pharmacies. Welcome to the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast, Sheila. Thank you so much, Todd. It's great to be here. So we are coming very close to the annual National Association of Specialty Pharmacies uh, event, which will be happening in Washington, D.C. Give our listeners a snippet, a background of that event, the importance of the event, and some of the high-level topics that you want our listeners to understand. Sure. So, Todd, this year we are hosting our fifth annual annual meeting and expo. It is going to be held at the Marriott Wardman Park in Washington, D.C., The conference begins on Monday, September 18th, with our Specialty Pharmacy Law Conference. And this year, we are also hosting a specialty, um, a certified specialty pharmacy prep course on September 18th as well. And this course is designed to help those pharmacists interested in sitting for the specialty pharmacy certification in October prepare for that exam. The annual meeting um, then begins on September 19th and runs through September 20th. We have the opportunity to earn more than 40 CE credit. We are also hosting on Tuesday, September 19th, the Women in Specialty Pharmacy Luncheon. And we are featuring our keynote speaker, Alex Azar, who is the former Deputy Secretary of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and former Lilly USA President. So we have many sponsorship opportunities available and also um, optimal exhibitor space. And we're looking forward to welcoming over 1,000 specialty pharmacy professionals in Washington to uh, come together and discuss how we can better provide care for patients, how we can address the issues affecting specialty pharmacy practice today, how we can um, join together to, you know, advocate and educate on behalf of these issues, and um, just, you know, just bring everybody together to um, have an educational forum and, you know, an open and honest um, exchange of ideas and thoughts and um, hear from key opinion leaders. Thanks for that, Sheila. I really am interested in understanding when a pharmacy owner and operator spends money and their time. The time aspect to me is more important because there's just not enough of it. Why they would invest their money and time to come to the National Association of Specialty Pharmacies annual event. And I'd like to kick that question over to Mr. Mike Agostino. Hey, Todd. Thanks so much. Appreciate the time to connect with some folks here listening to the podcast. Why do you think it's important to be a part of the NASP and specifically for a specialty pharmacy director, um, operator, and why this inv- why this event is so um, important? Hey, Todd, thanks so much. You know, as an owner-operator myself of a uh, nationwide specialty pharmacy, I am just so thrilled that we have an avenue here and a platform to come together to talk about the issues that are in front of us as specialty pharmacy owners and operators to openly talk about uh, what is facing us as well as balancing it out with what are the potential solutions. So we are excited to bring 
experienced stakeholders uh, to our conference to openly discuss that and to come up with ways on how we, we can meet and cure some opportunities, whether that be a consensus on uh, outcomes, data, how to incentivize appropriately, and how to find ways in which to access patients to, at the end of the day, ultimately, ultimately provide best-in-class patient care. So that's also balanced out, too, Todd, with, you know, this is a platform, really, where we've got uh, several other opportunities um, on that advocacy level also, too, but on the education and certification side as well. So really what our uh, best foot forward here is to represent uh, an industry that really highlights the importance of education, certification, and advocacy, uh, and all the while uh, not forgetting about what is really most important, and that's the patients that we serve. Mike, the patients, the heart of this entire business, what the, the, the entire purpose of healthcare, these payers, these manufacturers of these medications, some of them quite expensive, the importance to these partners that b- make out what is specialty pharmacy that's so different from community or senior care or compounding or hospital system pharmacy, even though there's facets of specialty really trickling into all of those uh, silos of pharmacy, they look to a specialty pharmacy provider to really know the entire uh, model, to understand documentation, to understand how to leverage technology, data analytics, follow-up, um, adherence, um, counseling. Just someone who has seen a specialty pharmacy grow from what it was to basically give the listeners a high-level overview of what it takes to be successful in today's specialty pharmacy market. You know, today there's just so much that has changed within healthcare uh, overall, Todd. And one of the things that I've learned quickly is that it takes all levels of stakeholders to have a successful approach to the market. And it even starts with, I'll give you an example, at the level of the NASP board. Uh, the board is specifically diversified to represent our, our, our membership as well as all stakeholders that are found within especially pharmacy today. So the big difference here is that it's not a one siloed approach. It takes others to come together to make sure that at the end of the day, we can service the patient appropriately and that we can effectively articulate the impact of patient care. You know, it's one thing to say that uh, you do a great job, but it's another thing to also say that you have the ability to show that you're doing a great job. That's a great point. Sheila, I have a question, a follow-up question for you. You and I talked a little bit before about uh, what is now known as Stop DIR Fees, and I believe that it's StopDIRFees.com. Is that correct? Yes. So tell us, and and I have my own opinions, but I want to hear it from you. (laughs) What what has happened? Uh, I feel like our... Or a sector of this this important sector of healthcare, you you see your physician, you're facing a chronic disease state, you're stressed out, the family pressures of raising kids, being a spouse, having a job. I mean, I can only imagine in my own situation how busy I am if I had a chronic disease on top of that, and then I run into issues with getting my medications paid for. But I, as a patient, I don't look. Uh, to the PBMs and I don't look to the inside model because I don't really care about that. All I care about is my care, the best care possible, and to recover. And that's what's on my mind. That's what's stressing me out. But behind the scenes, which patients don't get, there are so many things happening. How in my, you know, and I use the word hijack, how how has things come this far and why does it seem like our industry has been hijacked? Well, I think it's it's come this far and we feel like we're being hijacked because there aren't any regulations on the PBM and, you know, the, and the business practices and the contracts that they can offer to, you know, our independent specialty pharmacies. And, you know, where it becomes increasingly problematic is that, you know, these some of these PBMs own their own specialty pharmacies. So, it, you know, it doesn't really create a level playing field when, you know, the terms and conditions are not reasonable nor relevant or the financial terms of servicing these patients, you know, don't provide our specialty pharmacies with services. 
So, um, you know, we're, we're definitely going to have an access issue here if independent specialty pharmacy is forced to not be able to care for these patients. You know, some of these patients, and specialty pharmacy serves as that extension of the physician's office and to help this patient navigate along that journey. So, um, you know, it, it definitely um, is, is an issue that's in the forefront and we have to address it. So this initiative, there will be an overview for our participants at the NASP's an annual meeting to really sit in and listen to um, a high level, an update of what's going on, any initiatives and ways to becoming involved, and give a, give our listeners a summary of of what piece or what um, what session there will be to focus on the world of DIR fees and specialty pharmacy. Right. We're going to have several sessions that are going to focus on you know, our advocacy and our um, education efforts um, and focusing on DIR fees and what we've done and what we can do and how folks can roll up their sleeves and get involved. And, and I think that, you know, as you said, there may be some, you know, gaps here where we need to highlight for folks why this is so important and how this is going to become an issue for all of us who are interested in caring for these patients and who are so dedicated to that. So, you know, there were going to be sessions scattered throughout the program starting Monday with um, the second annual Specialty Pharmacy Law Conference where we're going to, you know, address the challenges, um, some of the PBF, PBM contracting and the DIR fees that, you know, specialty pharmacies are being um you know, face to deal with. And then it is just going to continue throughout the conference. There's also going to be opportunities for networking, you know, to discuss this with all of the stakeholders. What's really nice about this meeting, Todd, is that it draws, you know, a multi-stakeholder um, attendee composition. So we have everybody, you know, in the, in the specialty pharmacy channel talking about the issue and trying to develop solutions. If you're listening to the show, you're in the space, specialty pharmacy specifically, and you're not a member of the NASP, understand the importance of being part of different solutions, coming together, collaborating, networking, learning from each other. It isn't the NASP in itself that is driving knowledge and uh, subject matter expertise and strategy. It's the collective. It's us as an organization of, of specialty pharmacies throughout the country. And by coming together under the umbrella of this uh, National Association of Specialty Pharmacies, you get the Super Bowl of what is uh, specialty pharmacy. So I'm, I'm excited about the event. Once again, the, NS the NASP will host its fifth annual meeting in Washington, D.C., September 17th through 20th. This is a collective of the uh, brightest minds in our industry. Excited about this, uh, Sheila. I'm excited that the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast is relaunching with the assistance of the NASP. And if you're listening to the show, and once again, you're part of Specialty Pharmacy, give a shout out to us. Let us know what ideas you'd like to hear about, things that are important to you, and more importantly, to better patient care. Sheila and Mike, I want to thank you for being on the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast, and uh, this is an open platform for any of your colleagues, any of your associates that are part of Specialty Pharmacy. And we thank you so much for uh, being on the show today. Oh, thanks so much for having us, Todd, and we look forward to seeing everybody in September in Washington. Thank you. Hey, as a part of the initiative of the National Association of Specialty Pharmacy, something's come out of this organization that's been very special, meaningful to what is being a more effective provider of pharmacy services more specifically, specialty pharmacy services. There's a website out there you have to go look at, stopdirfees.com. That's a new website that spotlights the increasingly negative consequences of direct and indirect remuneration DIR fees. Once again, stopdirfees.com. Sheila Arquette, how are you today? I'm doing very well, Ted. How are you? I'm doing very well. I want you to give our listeners just an overview of the purpose and set the stage a little bit for us about StopDIRFees.com and why you think this is such an important um, part of the advocacy of specialty pharmacy, pharmacy in general, and the NASP's initiatives. Sure, and, and thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to reach out to your listeners and explain um, you know, our position and, and everything that we are doing at NASP to combat DIR fees. Uh, since the beginning of the year, we have been actively engaged both on the legislative and the regulatory front, trying to educate not only our members of Congress and governmental agencies 
um, about what specialty pharmacy is and the value of specialty pharmacy um, and the value for patients and what specialty pharmacy brings to the healthcare delivery channel, but also about this, you know, increasingly um, egregious business practice that some of the, you know, the bigger PBMs are utilizing um, DIR fees. And so as we continue to, um, you know, uh, shoe leather the hill in Washington and speak with members of Congress and their staff, it became very obvious that we needed to do more. We needed to do more about how do we better shine the spotlight on this issue and how it is directly impacting patients um, and, you know, restricting their access to not only medications that they need, you know, through some of the financial barriers that are um, created, but also access to receiving um, this high quality, high touch care from the pharmacy of their choice. So we developed this StopDIRFees.com website, and what it is is it's just a hub of educational materials and resources that we put together to better educate patients, healthcare providers, uh, legislators, government administrators, industry analysts, the media, and taxpayers, because ultimately taxpayers are the ones going to bear the brunt of uh, the you know consequences of DIR fees. You know, I, I've heard that accountants, lawyers, um pharmacists that have been in the industry for years can't explain what a DIR fee is and how it works specifically to the plan. So how can any of us really keep our finger on this and what this means? You know, I think there's a purpose for PBMs. I really do. I think there's an administrative purpose for the organizations. However, I think there's been a metamorphosis of power based on greed that has settled into the pharmaceutical industry and pharmacy services that has really messed some things up. So this is definitely the trickle down effect of what some of those strategies from the big PBMs have done. DRF fees is one of them. What's the call to action, Sheila? If you're if if I'm listening to this show, uh, the specialty pharmacy podcast kickoff show, which we're so excited about under Pharmacy Podcast Network, you have all these ears listening to you. They're on their way to work. They might be working out, they're jogging, uh, they're listening as they're going home. What's the call to action? Sure. Um, what the call to action is, Todd, for your listeners, is we want you to get involved. We want you to start um, reaching out to your members of Congress and your local representatives and just trying to call attention to the fact that we have these opaque and these very non-transparent PBM business practices that are impacting patients. And they're also impacting your ability as you know somebody who's involved in the specialty pharmacy care delivery model somewhere along the way in that ability to service these patients. So we want you to, um, you know, stand up with us. We want you to help to work to develop actionable solutions. Not only do we want to highlight that there's a problem, but we want to position NASP and in, in our specialty pharmacy, um, you know, our members and, and those folks involved in the care of these patients as a resource to Washington, to, to Washington, to CMS, to these legislators and these representatives. How can we work together to come up with solutions that make sense and are beneficial for everybody? Because at the end of the day, we're all, you know, rooted in the care of these patients. That's why we, you know, drive to work every day and that's why we do what we do. And so we want to ensure that we're continuing to provide the highest level of care for these patients. And I agree, PBMs do have a function, but somewhere along the way, you know, they, they seem to got, you know, a, a little bit sidetracked here and now, you know, we're, we're assessing fees against pharmacies and we're using quality measures that don't uh, apply to those pharmacies. So the pharmacies really have no way to impact the care of those patients. They want to, right? They, that, that's, what they, that's what they do every day. That's the infrastructure that they've built and, and you know, the, the business model under which they operate. But the way that the current structure is, there's no way for them to, to positively impact the care of this patient or the, the total cost of care of this patient. So we, we need folks to get involved. We need folks to, you know, just raise awareness to the fact that we don't all understand this. It's very difficult to understand, but how can we better understand and how can we better make the system more efficient and, you know, do what it's designed to do or do what we're committed to doing, and that's taking care of patients. Better patient outcomes with the seriousness of some of these chronic diseases and what the patient is facing is our purpose. It's why we're all in, in healthcare, specifically pharmacy and specialty pharmacy. So I completely agree with you, uh, Sheila. I'm excited about being part of this. Stop. DIRfees.com. Take a look at that. It's a hub of educational materials and resources for patients, healthcare providers, our pharmacists. Share this information with your legislators and people that you know. 
in Congress and state representatives, they don't understand this. How can we expect them to understand what's happening when under the guise of what is PBM management, there's this uh, dirty secret called DIR fees and the way that some of them are structured. So use this information to empower knowledge and getting this information in front of people that make these decisions. Sheila, I'm so excited to and very honored to be part of um, helping to get this word out. I'm also excited about the Specialty Pharmacy podcast. And thank you for um, for previewing and, and making a, a summary today of what StopDIRFees.com is. Thank you so much, Todd, for you know um, stepping up and, and helping us with our effort. And another great thing for your listeners is any type of patient testimonials that we can, um, you know, learn about, and we can have patients step forward and tell their story about how, you know, this this um, threat to the access, or you know, them being denied access to the pharmacy of their choice, or even these huge copays that sometimes they um, are presented with, how that impacts, you know, their journey. Um, I, I can think of no, you know greater offense than, you know, you're diagnosed with a life-threatening or life-altering disease. The doctor says, but there's a treatment and, you you know, you have your prescription um, at the pharmacy. They want to dispense. They want to help take care of you and you can't afford it. So members of Congress really love to hear from their constituents. I mean, they're very receptive to us telling the story, but then when they can actually see how it impacts somebody back in their home district, I mean, that, that really, really helps to, um, you know, move uh, the needle forward and, and help us to advance on coming up with solutions that are going to help everybody. For the listeners, pharmacypodcast.com, the contact section, there is an ability to send to your patients, to your senator, to anyone that you've talked to, this link and start recording an actual input and your opinion and the opinions of your pharmacist, which we're going to take those opinions and actually weave them into a future podcast they, of course, can be nameless. Um, we'd like voices. We'd like actual stories to be recorded there. So once again, pharmacypodcast.com forward slash contact. And you'll be able to, like I said, record your thoughts and your professional opinion or the opinion of your in the feelings of your patient, which is obviously most important. And like I said, we will put that into a future episode. Sheila, I am excited for what's to come and want to thank you for sharing this information and for being part of this. Thank you so much, Todd, and thank you for all of your help and to your listeners as well. I look forward to bringing um, updates and what's new and exciting in specialty pharmacy to your listeners. You were listening to an episode of the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast in partnership with the NASP, the National Association of Specialty Pharmacies. And we thank you for listening. Thanks for listening to the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast. Be sure to share this podcast with your fellow pharmacists, doctors, and healthcare providers dedicated to optimal patient care. If you have ideas for future episode topics, please email the Pharmacy Podcast Network. Send your message to publisher at pharmacypodcast.com.